black people and superpowers, oh, you already know we got some things that we need to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective in regards to the Netflix series called Superset. Hey, hey, everybody, if you are new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. So if you have not watched Supercell on Netflix, press pause, er, go on over to Netflix, watch it, binge watch it, it's super good. And then come back because you know we got to chat about it in the comment section. I got five things that I want to break down for y'all, but before we do, put in the comment section, what did you think about Supercell? I know all of y'all wanted me to review this series saying that you loved it, so let's talk about it. What did you guys think? What are your predictions for a season two? We're going to talk about my final thoughts, my predictions, and all of the things at the end of this, so make sure you stay tuned. So the first thing that we have to talk about is obvious, and that is sickle cell. If you don't know what sickle cell is, in the real world, it is an inherited blood disease that impacts your red blood cells. It basically makes those red blood cells into a sickle shape. That's why it's called sickle cell. You get it? It's a really serious disease that a lot of people have. And while anybody can get the disease, it is very prevalent in the African-American community. And we have to start with sickle cell because every single person that had powers had a family member that had sickle cell. Think about it. Michael's mom had it. Sabrina's dad had it. It was somebody directly attached to them who had this disease. So even though this is centered around black people having superpowers, which I absolutely love, I'm not really a big superpower, superhero type girl. Like that's never been my thing. But watching this, I was like, oh, this is really good. I found it interesting that the non-melanated individuals wanted to trap the black people, wanted to capture the black people, wanted to tame their superpowers. Their motives didn't seem authentic. They were telling those that had superpowers one thing, we want to help you, we want to help you control it. And then other people were seeing things that were not really lining up with that. I thought it was interesting that all of the black people had superpowers and then the non-melanated individuals, AKA the white people, did not. You can do whatever you want to do with that information. The second thing that we need to talk about in regards to supercell is the superpowers but i'm also gonna lump into their spiritual gifts i'm saying superpowers and spiritual gifts because y'all always know i get a spiritual message out of a lot of the movies that i review and the tv shows and this is no different i mean think about it when someone really does have spiritual gifts in the real world people think that they're odd people think that they're weird people are kind of want to stand off or stay away from them because the things that they are experiencing or stating or seeing or hearing aren't familiar to other people who don't have spiritual gifts and they think you weird. But what we see with Supercell is we see these gifts and these powers either being used for good or being used for evil. And that's how the real world is too. We know that there are good things that you can do in this world and then there are dark bad things that you can do in regards to the realm of the spirit too. This is where we get things like dark magic and black magic. Those are very real things. So when you have these superpowers, you can use them to help people or you can use them to not help people. It is your choice. And we've seen all of those who have superpowers they seem like they wanted to use them for good, that they wanted to help people, that they wanted to do good deeds with those things. But unfortunately, there were some people who had superpowers that kind of flipped and did something on the opposite end, which was use their powers for evil. And unfortunately, this wasn't done on their own accord. They were coerced into using their powers to fight the other people who have powers because they wanted to reel them in back into the world to be studied, to be captured, to be all of the things. And unfortunately, that didn't work out too well with a lot of people. We've seen the non-melanated individuals coerce people like Michael to come on in to the dark side, essentially use your powers to capture the other people who are trying to use their powers for good because we can help you with your son, because we can give you a stable job and you can have some stable income and you can see your kid regularly and you won't have no baby mama drama. And even though in his hearts of hearts, he was wanting to do the right thing, which was be a good father to his son, he wind up kind of getting reeled in on the dark side 
for that very reason. And what all of the people had in common who was reeled in to use their powers for bad was that they loved hard. There was somebody in their life that they wanted to save, that they wanted to love on, that they wanted to be present with, or so on and so forth. But unfortunately, they superpowers were trying to be contained. They were locked into them clear containers, right? One of the, uh, the young girls, I don't remember her name, she has healing powers, so they use her to heal other people. And so they are locked in, their powers are contained, and they're not able to use them in any way that's good or bad. They just have to do what the people want them to do if they want to live. Because we seen Taser's mama try to escape and she got shot up, shot dead, as we say, in the very beginning of the first episode, which we gonna talk about in a second because family is important in this supercell situation. One of the other things before I move on to the next point is that spiritual gifts grow and evolve. If you guys didn't realize this, all of the gifts, Michael, Taser, Sabrina, Rodney, all of those, when they first got their gifts or found out that they had a gift, they, they didn't know what to do with it. They was confused. They were uncertain. They didn't know how to use it. They didn't know when it came on. If I had control over it, what do I do? But as time evolved, Rodney knew that he can turn on his speed and run real fast. Michael knew that he could teleport to one situation and to the other. Sabrina knew that she had all of these superpowers to move and do all of these things. Andre knew that he could bend the heck <laughs> out of things that have like this super strength. And so as they got to know their gifts, they started to grow, become more comfortable with it, and they have more control over their gifts. This is what happens in the regular world too when you have spiritual gifts, when you have gifts of healing, you have gifts of prophecy, you have gifts of fill in the blank. Those gifts grow and evolve when you are tapping into them. And I know I might be a little woo woo for some of the people who don't understand or even believe in spiritual gifts, but these are a real thing. When I'm talking about spiritual gifts, I'm not talking about the ones in this movie talking about you can run super duper fast and do all of this. Like I'm talking about spiritual gifts given from the Lord, given from God. Anyway, let's move on to number three because I'm getting too woo woo for y'all. The third thing that I want to talk about in regards to Supercell is games. I don't know if y'all seen it, but I initially, almost immediately was like, hold on, is this LA? Because the red and the blue was giving bloods and crips. And you know, LA is the initiator, is the genesis of where gangs came from. So I'm like, hold on, is this Cali or is this London? Like, what's up? This is where we've seen Taser come through as the ring leader. I mean, that man got stabbed. He was out here killing people, shaking people, cutting people, you know, doing all of the things that he shouldn't be doing. But he was like the head honcho, even though he experienced violence and severe injuries from, you know, himself, but also to those that were in his gang. And we know in real life that gangs aren't always the healthiest thing, but we look at it from an aspect of collectivity and community, this is why gangs are formed. Taser did not have a really good family system because he felt like his mama abandoned him and left him. So he had to turn to something else where he was going to get the love, the support, feel like he's that top dog where people are going to be there for them and for him. This is where gangs are formed. It creates this level of brotherhood and sisterhood that you may not have gotten from your own family and from your own friend. Thank goodness for Taser's grandma because she stepped in and tried to rule him in a little bit and to take care of him while his mom, you know, disappeared because he really thought that she abandoned him. And I believe that Taser's mom was captured. She tried to escape and was killed, not because she wanted to get out of there just for the sake of it, but I really believe that she was trying to get to her son. And so while she didn't make it, obviously she died and they shot her. I think he has this wound, like he isn't sure, he isn't aware if his mom really loved him, if his mom really wanted to be with him, if his mom really wanted to connect with him because she didn't get a chance to verbalize that. The fourth thing I want to talk about in regards to Supercell is family. It was prevalent and it was very clear to me that all of them had some type of familial ties 
which was their driving force for a lot of their actions. Seeing Rodney have issues with his mom, and I, I'm gonna talk about this at the end in regards to my predictions and my final thoughts, but he was talking about how his mom's husband was racist. So I'm thinking that he doesn't have the same dad and maybe he's part black and I don't, maybe his dad, his biological dad has, there's a whole bunch of things. I think his biological father was black and obviously because sickle, you get it. And so maybe his biological father has sickle cell and his mom's current husband didn't like him because he was black, so on and so forth. And then that caused some familial ties and some difficulties in Rodney's and his mom's relationship. But he was longing for his mom at the house, like, mom, can I stay here? I don't know what to do. I miss you. I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with my siblings. And the mama was like, you can't be here. You, it's a no for us, dog. And we know what that means. That screams abandonment issues and mommy issues and mama trauma that we don't talk about enough. We talk about daddy issues all the time, but we don't talk about the wounds that mommy leaves you when she's not present, when you can't have the best relationship with her, when she chooses something else. And what do you do when that was the person who has given birth to you? You were in her womb. So sometimes those mommy issues are way deeper than daddy issues could ever be. Then we see Sabrina and Charlene. Is the sister named Charlene? We see that they're very tight in regards to their sibling relationship. And we don't have the full story of like where their parents are and why it's just them two, but they have a very close knit relationship. And it seems like their sisterhood means everything to them because that's really all they got. But Charlene is out here being with an abusive man who's like a drug dealer slash gang member, head gang member slash he got superpowers slash he beating her and she's still going back to him. Like it was a whole lot going on there. Sabrina was trying to save her sister. Sabrina was trying to say, leave this fool alone because he is gonna wind up killing you, but you keep going back to him because you love him, because you want money, because you want sex, because you miss him, because he keeps reeling you in with lies and deception. And she was trying to save her sister. We already talked about Taser and his mom and how she got locked up, but he thinks that she abandoned him. But there was so much more to the story that he doesn't know just yet. And then last but not least, we got Michael. We see him not only having a relationship with his fiance, who they've been together for like nine years, and he's just now barely proposing, but that's a whole other conversation for another day. But even with that, it seems like he's trying to start his own family unit, right? He wants to get married. I'm going to assume that, you know, they wanted to have children. But we also see him have a very close relationship with his mom, who has very severe sickle cell. Like, she is constantly in pain, constantly being hospitalized. And so while family is important to all of them in individual ways, it is a driving factor of why they want to use their powers for good and not necessarily for evil. The fifth and last thing that I want to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts and predictions is the unknown. There was a lot of things that I felt was missing and I'm like, hold on, there's pieces to the puzzle that I don't really know about. We see them tracking and monitoring basically with all of these cameras all over the city. I wanna learn more about what that's all about. I wanna learn more about the driving force and the driving factor between why you want to capture these people with superpowers anyway and what you really want to do with them. I don't feel like that part was clear. Yes, you're telling them that you want to tame their powers, teach them how to use it, use it for good, but what is the real motive? Are you trying to learn? You're trying to get their DNA? You're trying to replicate this in other races and other non-melanated individuals? What are you really trying to do? Because obviously one of the plots and the plans is turning them against each other, right? Reeling them in and saying, hey, you can get out. You don't have to be locked into this, you know, little clear cage. If you go and seek out other people who have powers and bring them back in through the portal <laughs> and we're going to compensate you and give you money and blah, blah, blah. Like they are using them to turn against each other when what they should be doing is banning together to overthrow the non-melanated individuals. I knew it got real tricky when they opened up that sickle cell facility. And she was like, it's the first of its kind. And I said, mm -mm, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Because when she first walked in that, when that white lady first walked into the room, when she first met Michael and his mom, and they had this moment of like, I see you, but you see me, what's up? 
I was like, mm -mm, something ain't right. I feel it in my spirit, something ain't right. So I feel like they are using this sickle cell facility to learn more about the powers, to maybe collect DNA, to try to replicate or I don't know yet, but it's something real fishy about that. And we gonna learn more about that in season two. So my final thoughts on this is that this was a 10 out of 10. I rarely give shows and movies 10 out of 10 because I'm like, ain't nothing perfect. But this was so interesting and intriguing to me and I absolutely positively loved it. Soon as the credits came on and it was written by, produced by, directed by this rap man dude, I'm like, who is rap man? <laughs> I literally had to go and Google it like, who is rap man? Uh, clearly he's like a director and like this big time dude and like a rapper, I'm assuming, who does some really interesting things. So I am glad that he took the time and the opportunity to create this because he's right. We have not seen a show, a movie like this. Well, not a movie, but a show like this where it's centered around black people and black people have the superpowers. I personally believe that there's going to be a season two. <laughs> Hands down, Netflix, if Netflix does not bring this back for a season two, they tripping. It has consistently been in the top 10 for I don't know how long, which tells you everybody and their mama is watching it. It's so good and we want more of it and we want more of it quickly, okay? Sometimes Netflix be taking a year, two years, three years to bring back a season two of a thing and we don't want to wait that long. We want it right now and I mean ASAP. So here's a few predictions that I have if there will be officially a season two. I have this spidey sense in my spirit, <laughs> in my shanana, <laughs> that the girlfriend ain't really dead. I don't know, y'all. I feel like Michael's girlfriend isn't fully dead yet. And maybe he can go to the future again and rewind and do something. Like, I feel like there's something more to this story that needs to be unlocked and unpeeled, okay? Obviously, I think that Andre is going to come back over to the winning side, okay? Like, he's going to give up the whole other situation and he's going to be like, you know what? Let me rock with my peeps. I need to do what is right and we need to do what needs to be done. And we've seen him prepared to do that, but I don't know how that's going to play out with the non-melanated individuals when they find out. I also think that Michael is so pissed that his girlfriend passed away, allegedly passed away, because you know I don't really think she fully, fully dead, dead, dead yet. <laughs> But I think he gonna go into the future and he is going to collect as much information as possible. And then he's going to come back and try to rearrange everything. And not just for his life, but for all of their lives. He's gonna try to rearrange the issue that Rodney got with his family. He's gonna try to rearrange Charlene and Sabrina's relationship and her being captured when she ain't even the one with the superpowers. He's gonna try to rearrange Andre's relationship with his son like he's going to try to rearrange all the things, okay? And I think that that is a good thing. He's trying to use his powers to help his new friends. So he gonna go into the future, get as much information about all the things, all the people as possible, bring it back, and then he's going to try to prevent all of the bad things from happening. So while there was just so much more I wanted to chat with y'all about, I didn't want this review video to be super duper long, but I appreciate you guys watching my review video. If I missed anything, or if you have some additional thoughts that I did not cover, put it in the comment section because I want to have so much dialogue about this because it is so good and juicy. So please make sure to stick around, watch some of my other videos on TV and movie shows, and I will see you next time. Be blessed.